What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back today at Dealer Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. How about a 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands? You know we got to take this for a quick test drive. This is my first time actually putting hands on one of these and I've heard so many people praising the Bronco. It's supposed to be a pretty epic vehicle. Like I said, I don't know. I've never actually put my hands on one before, but this thing looks really nice. And I'm going to tell you right now, the blue, this is beautiful absolutely beautiful we'll see what the miles are on it here in just a second it looks like super low miles 26,703 what engine does this have in it? it's also got ppf across a good portion of the front right here there's your badlands logo i gotta admit i kind of like it i do i kind of like it let's look under the hood and see what things look like under there i love this interior wow and look at the intro screen that's pretty impressive. Okay, not gonna lie, it's it, this is pretty nice. <laughs> this is pretty nice. Like I said, I've never I've never actually looked at one before. Um, getting into the back looks like it could be a lot of fun though. We had some nasty storms last night, and uh, looks like the interior held up well, meaning these tops didn't leak. Looks like there's a lot of pieces to them. Yeah, this looks like it'd be a lot of fun. I'd get myself in trouble with something like this. Gotta remember to put that windshield wiper back up when we're done. All right, let's see. Oh, what is this? What engine is this? this it's an EcoBoost for sure. What is it, a 2.7? Oh, wow, yeah, it's the 2.7 EcoBoost. Good Lord. Um, so, I've heard about this. I've heard that opening the hood on a Bronco is like opening Pandora's box, and I couldn't disagree more. No, I'm kidding, I agree 100%. Um, this looks like an absolute cluster. What a mess. Wow. Yeah, good luck owning one of these outside of warranty. Why doesn't it close? Great, it doesn't close. Come on, there we go. A little, little worrisome that the hood didn't want to close. Let's take a look at the interior again and then we'll start it up. Who's calling me? Oh, we've got power outages all over the state. We had some nasty hail storms last night. Um, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I've got at least two cars totaled, probably more. Um, I think I lost about $70,000 worth of cars last night. There'll be a, a video on that soon. So stay tuned for that. Low fuel, nothing surprising there. Nice screen, I like it. Nice touch screen right here as well. We can turn that air conditioning off, we don't need it. There we go. No need for air conditioning right now, guys. It is really nice out here. We're parked right behind this little, little Ford Fiesta. Let's take this thing out on a drive. Looks like you've got some buttons up here for, I have no idea, axle lock, rear, axle lock, front. I don't know what that is, probably sway bar disconnect. And this one, this one looks like the axle is leaving. Um, it's just the rear the rear differential is, is leaving. Traction control, you got your radio down here, climate control underneath it, and you got a little USB port down here, C and A. You've got your little Ford placard, windows and mirrors right here, your four wheel drive modes, shifter, and then way down here by your knees is your headlights, your parking brake. Very interesting layout, and there's your steering wheel. I don't know. Let's, uh, I love that backup camera, it's very bright. All right, let's take this one out for a cruise, guys. I want to see how the uh, how the Bronco drives. Now well, maybe I need one of these in my life. What's the average fuel economy? Seventeen point three. Not bad at all. The EcoBoost is no joke. It's just one of those engines that, as it ages, I'd be looking to get rid of it. You know, <laughs> truthfully, as as it gets older and gets up there in miles, uh, out of warranty, I would probably be looking to. Uh, to ditch it as quickly 
as possible. It just looks like an absolute nightmare to work on. Thank you. We know that I don't have a seat belt. Come on, man. All right, we're up here at the test track, so we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. See what it's got. See how it handles its speed. I like this one. I do. This could be a new replacement for well, for maybe for my Raptor. <laughs> my Raptor video hasn't even come out yet, and I think it's totaled. <laughs> <laughs> for, for mail damage. That's great. I've already filmed the Raptor video. It's in the queue to go live, so stay tuned. Raptor video is coming, but uh, it's probably totaled before the video even came out. So, yeah, I am I am kind of looking around for some new cars. All right, here we go. Ready? I hate that start-stop feature. That sounds awful. Ooh. That sounded... Oh, wow. I'm only going 40 and I feel like I'm being blown all over the road. This thing is worse than my Jeep Wrangler. Oh, my. Yeah, you think a Jeep is bad. <laughs> Jeep ain't got nothing on this, man. A Jeep is literally a rolling brick. And I'm here to tell you this thing is this thing is pretty rough. I didn't even I didn't even get to 60. I think the best I got up to was like 45. It was really bad. Really really bad. I'm not impressed. Okay, here we go. Let's give it the beans. Okay, there we go. It takes off for sure. That's that's it. Got to slow it down. Man, you get up to about 60 miles an hour, this thing is, we don't even have any wind today. There's no wind. The wind is not blowing. You get this thing up, you know, 45, 55 miles an hour, all of a sudden, it's, you can feel the, the, the thing just being blown all over the road. I couldn't imagine driving this on a windy day. That would be, no thank you, no thank you. I'm gonna completely pass on this one. I know this is probably more than I'd wanna spend anyway. Um, but, like I said, I, I am looking for something. This is not, this is not gonna be it, guys. And yes, I remembered to leave the windshield wiper up for whatever that means. It's definitely not a dead battery, as some of you said, because this thing fired right up. Why don't we take a quick look at this 2018 Silverado Texas Edition with 119,000 miles on the odometer thing is so big I can't even fit it into the frame. I gotta walk half a block away just to get the whole truck in there. It's got the four big doors. It looks like it's got a decent sized bed too. It's probably somewhere around five and a half, six feet. It's got the cap on top of it. ARE Z71 like a Cadillac. It's got some good Firestone Transforce HT tires. It's actually not a bad looking truck at all. I know I kind of throw shade at GM, but they do make some great looking trucks. I like this aftermarket front bumper, worn. You got your winch, hopefully the trigger's in there somewhere. If not, you can find one. But that's a, that's a pretty heavy duty bumper. Let's take a look at the interior. Looks like from the sticker on the windshield, it's from Louisiana. Probably out by the bayou. It's got a lot of stuff in it. There's your trigger, which is nice. Let's see what's under here. Just a bunch of trash. Interesting, this is probably a trade-in. This wouldn't be a repossession, I don't think. Not over here. Yeah, this is a trade-in from a Chevy dealer, a local Chevy dealer. It's probably just got more miles than they want to try to mess with for selling it on their lot. 120,000 for a new car dealer is, uh, yeah, that's quite a bit of miles. Let's see what we got on here. Re remote start, keyless entry. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty rough looking. Let's fire this up. I like this. I do. I like this. We'll see how it runs. All right, ready? Do we have any lights on the dash? Uh-oh. Yep, check engine light. Let's turn that air conditioning off. Well, we'll turn it down. We'll turn it down. We don't we don't need any AC today. It's super nice today. Really, really nice out. You got a decent screen here is your climate control, and you got uh, only a few buttons. You got hill descent control, cargo light, traction control, heated seats, four wheel drive, built in trailer brake, headlights. There's your windows and everything over there. 
Let's see if that air conditioning kicks on. So we have a TPMS light flashing and we have a check engine light that is solid. Important window does work. Less important window works. We do not have a sunroof, which is fine. Steering feels good. Brakes feel good. Let's take a listen to that engine. It's a big concern on these uh, on these GM vehicles is any rattling or tapping coming from the engine bay is an instant no-go. Pass on that, no thank you. It's got a cracked windshield, I just saw that. It's gonna be a 5.3. Let's take a quick peek just to double check. I know it's a 5.3, but it doesn't hurt to look. Yep, you still have a trans dipstick, which is nice. It sounds like it runs like a top. Brake fluid is clean, it looks new. That's a good sign. Believe it or not, something as simple as the brake fluid tells me that somebody cared enough to change their brake fluid. They probably took care of the car, or truck in this case, and that's true because how many people actually change their brake fluid? Like nobody, nobody takes care of their brake fluid. You know what, nobody does it. Um, so chances are fluids like trans and oil have been regularly changed, although I'll be honest with you, this trans fluid is really dark. That almost looks like oil to me. Uh, I don't like that. Come on, get in there. Get in there. It doesn't want to go. It's fighting me. Wow. Okay. Good Lord. Get in there. Well, now that I've got dirty trans fluid all over me, why don't we take this one for a run? I like the way it runs, but I am concerned that that transmission fluid is so dark. I definitely want to make sure this one's got gears before we uh, think about putting a bit on this one. This one, I'm this one I'm interested in. Here's what I'll do though: if I were to get this, I'll take the cap off of it. We're parked right next to a Tahoe. Yeah. Um, if I were to get this, I would take the cap off, and I'd probably just sell the cap. Oh man, it is smooth so smooth here's something that i've noticed though i just realized is the ac is not on oh well because the button wasn't pushed dummy there we go i was gonna say we got no air conditioning so far this thing feels nice it shifted and it shifted again shifts feel good so as long as it's got uh the rest of the gears this is one I'll bid on, for sure. I like this. Despite the cracked windshield, I still like it. All right, let's see how it does when you give it the beans. We can always do a trans service on it. It's not a big deal. We can do that at the house, get it on the lift, swap out the fluid and filter. All right, here we go. It's slow. There we go. We got gears. We got gears. And the brakes feel amazing. I only got it up to 50. This thing is, it is kind of slow, to be quite honest with you. It is slow. Let's see if we can flip this without making a three-point turn. Can we do it? No, we cannot. We got close. We got close, but no cigar. Back her up. We almost had it, guys. Just maybe off by a couple feet, we almost had it. Let's see if we can get this thing up to 60. I'd really like to get it up to 60, but it's kind of a dog, man. Um, very, very slow. And I don't think that's because anything serious is wrong with it. The check engine light is probably something stupid like an oxygen sensor. It runs great. It sounds great. Turn that AC off. It's idling perfect. Temperature's looking good. Oil pressure's good. Okay, let's try it again. And let's see if we can let's see if we can get it up to 60 miles an hour this time. Oh, oops. That was an accident. I I don't try to. I couldn't get it up to 60 before we had to shut it down. Couldn't do it. Got up to about 55. So I'll apologize in advance for skirting the tires there. Uh, I, I absolutely don't try to, to burn rubber. That's not my intent. My intent is to see how these things get going from a dig. And one thing I noticed, let me tell you why. 
All right, I'm gonna just give it a little gas here and I want you to listen. I'll stop talking, just listen for a clunk. There it is. There's, listen. Did you hear that? Ooh. Yeah, I know what that is because I've dealt with that about a hundred different times. There's some slop in the rear differential on this. There's definitely some slop in the rear diff. So that's something to take into consideration. It's not, it's not horrible and it's not something that's like, this can't be repaired. Where was I parked? Was I parked next to this Tahoe? I think I was. Um, but it's something to be aware of, especially if you're gonna be towing, doing any kind of heavy towing or long drives with this, you're gonna to need to uh, have a look at that rear diff. Uh, you might be able to get away with changing the fluid, but that clunking noise is coming from the rear end and uh, it only gets worse, it doesn't get better. You change the uh, you change the fluid, you might have a shot. Basically what it looks like is this thing, uh, even though I thought it had been well maintained, obviously I was wrong. It's got good tires and it looks decent, but it's definitely gonna need a little bit of servicing. If I could get it for a good price, I'd absolutely take this in a heartbeat. So I'm gonna put it on the list. We'll just see what happens come auction day. Here's another one I kinda like, a 2016 Dodge Charger RT. Hemi, that right there tells you all you need to know. 5.7 V8, oh, don't tell me the windows were left down in this. Oh man, we had torrential storms, guys. Well, no, it's wet. Yeah, yeah, it's wet. <laughs> Does it still got a window in there? We'll see, we'll see if it'll fire up. It's got some bumps and bruises. Nothing too crazy though. Good tires on the back. Looks like the front's got good tires too. What's going on in here? Tell me this whole car wasn't left open like this. Oh my goodness. What is, oh yeah, it's soaked. Oh yeah, you can see the water. Yeah, it's, it's soaked. Well, and then somebody looks like they smashed this with a baseball bat. I'll bet the windows are, are missing. We'll see. We'll see. That, uh, that sucks. That sucks. This is one I'd probably have to take over to, uh, Brian at the auto spa. Of course, it's got exhaust. Oh man, are you serious? a gallon average that's actually not bad that's not bad at all let's pop the hood somebody probably just cut off the mufflers it's probably just got a straight pipe where the mufflers used to be I'm looking for any hail damage like I said we did have some pretty significant hail last night so and it's Oklahoma so you always want to just kind of look around. White cars are the hardest to see too. Coolant looks good, runs like a top, sounds healthy. No visible leaks. It's got some bumps and bruises, but, and I love these seats. I do nice bolstered Alcantara seats. Looks like they're cooled as well. So this, this one's got a few options, guys. You got the, the Beats Audio. Let's see if we can go to seats, ventilated seats. Yes, air conditioning, auto. Let's kick on the, uh, let's kick on the climate. And let's see if we got cold air conditioning coming from these vents here. And we'll take this one for a quick spin too. Why are the lights all on? That's what I wanna know. Oh, there we go. There we go, we got them off sunroof <laughs> make sure that's closed yeah it is all right you got the little paddle shifters man the, the rt for being kind of an entry level you know a v8 entry level this is not bad these are not bad at all 
some people some people just don't like them but it's got adjustable pedals there's some pretty heavy uh, lower back support there that I'm I'm letting the air out of <laughs> it's got the uh, it's got the uh, airbags in the seats to give you some lumbar support air conditioning is cold I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off now why don't we go ahead and take this one for a ride we're parked right next to an Equinox Premier so let's take this thing out on the road and see how it does brakes feel good um, important window works we know the less important window works it's gonna need a mirror and it's gonna need a, a detail because it did get water in it it doesn't smell bad yet though like I guess this this storm just happened last night so as long as this thing's got a uh, got a transmission in it that shifts through the gears I'll be happy exhaust sounds pretty nice i like that i do i like the exhaust on this and these things are so easy you don't have to go and spend you know uh 1500 2000 on an exhaust system you can literally cut out the resonator cut out the mufflers and these things sound absolutely insane now traction control is on and i am not going to smash on because i don't want to uh I don't want to burn, well I do want to burn out the tires, but I don't want to do it on someone else's car, so. And there's 60. This one had no problem at all getting to 60 miles an hour. It's going to keep beeping at me until I put my dang seatbelt on, isn't it? Alright, I'll put my seatbelt on guys, let's flip this thing around. And uh, I'll put my seatbelt on. I think my driver's seat is wet. I do because I feel like I'm getting I'm getting wet. There, I put my seatbelt on. I'm gonna get you guys down here where you can see. Uh, maybe we can change the gauges. 20 miles a gallon though. Like this must have been a highway car. I think this is a repossession. It's from a finance company. Um, so this is most likely gonna be a repo. Again, I'm gonna kind of get it rolling before I really hit the gas on this because I, I don't want to, to burn tires on people's cars, guys. It's, it's disrespectful. There we go. All right, so no clunks. The brakes are solid. I don't feel any vibrations at speed. And when I hit the brakes, I didn't feel any vibrations either. Very smooth. And the exhaust, it's, it sounds good. It really does. The exhaust on this thing sounds absolutely sick. Yeah, I like this one. I like this one. It's uh, 2016, so it's a little bit older. And it's got hundred, almost 120,000 miles on it. These things do go for some money, but I don't think this one's gonna go for that much, guys. It does have some bumps and bruises, and I think this could be something we might be able to get our hands on. I'm on the prowl, man. I'm looking for more vehicles, and I'm thinking maybe this time I'll, I'll try to find some vehicles that are a little bit newer. We'll park it right back where we got it, right here next to the Equinox Premier. Such an easy car to drive to. Very nice. Yeah, I, I like this. I really do. I'm certain this is going to be a repossession. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Should we uh, should we try to bid on this? I actually, I really do. I like this car. I like the Challenger better, but it's also nice to have four doors. I think this is going to be the last one, guys. A 2018 Escalade. Now, these things do go for money, but... There's a plus side to this one for me, and that's mileage. It's got 178,000 miles on the odometer. I can't see when it was delivered. I'd like to know how long it's been sitting here because that might motivate them to let it go. This is gonna be a trade-in from Joe Cooper. The tires look good. The body looks good. This is it's actually in really nice shape, guys, really nice. So let's see, 14 city, 21 highway. And it looks like the retail on this is $51,000. Now, obviously, at a wholesale dealership, it will not ever bring $51,000. It's got Alcantara all over where the glove compartment is. This is nice. Alcantara headliner. You've got the DVD screen. This might be like a, uh, what do they call them, platinum? It is a plat derp. There's a, it's a platinum. Yes, sir, it is a platinum. 
All right, so this is, uh, this got all the bells and whistles, man. It's as good as it gets. You got uh, screens in the headrest. You got a screen. I can't get to it from here. You got a screen right here as well because, you know, one screen there and one screen there is not enough. You need another screen in the middle. Wow. Third row seats. Interior looks really nice. It smells good. Yeah. Right next to it's a Yukon Denali. I passed the Yukon right by. I passed it right up. I <laughs> went straight for the Escalade. Let's see. Oh, it's got the headphones too. The floor mats are back here. We got your uh, three sets of headphones. Looks like two of them are aftermarket. This one actually says Cadillac on it. I don't know what that is, but you got your floor mats back here and everything. Nice. Yep, we're taking this one for a drive. But first I want to start it up and listen for that Cadillac tick. Uh, I hate the Cadillac user experience. I really don't like these. No ticking. Not that I heard anyway. Over here you got your 4x4 options, headlights, heads up display, wipers, shifter, and then this, this whole Cadillac user experience thing. Ventilated seats. Here's the problem. Sometimes these quit working. Um, these have a, they, it works, it does, it works. These have a tendency to die. It's not that big of a deal to fix it. You can buy the, you can buy the screen or whatever on Amazon, not a big deal. Ventilated seats work. I can already feel air conditioning coming on, I think. Don't turn me into a liar. We'll turn it on, oh, we've got it on heat. And, this is what I don't like, you know, like, what do you hold it or you just keep, you just keep tapping the silly little, I just don't, I don't like that. Air conditioning works. Yeah. Let's, let's turn the AC off. I just don't. And now we got heated seats on. I, I didn't turn the heated seats on. I don't want heated seats. Okay, this is clunky. This is this is very clunky. I don't like it. I, I don't like it at all. You get two sets of keys. They're both very worn out. Yeah, 50 grand is never gonna happen. Looks like you've got a cooler probably in here. Turns into like a little ice chest, I guess. Yeah, put that, uh, put that lid on right there and you can keep stuff cool in there. The glove box opens, I can't remember, there's a silly button right there for the glove box. You got your books, maybe even the original window sticker. Yes, there it is. The original window sticker is in here too. Important window, less important window. So far so good, I'm, I'm almost forgetting about that charger already. I think I've, I've already forgotten about the Dodge charger. I'll take this any day of the week over that charger. I wish I could buy all of them, but I just don't have the, I don't have the money to buy everything that I would like to buy out here. So I just kind of have to compare and contrast and decide what's best for me. Engine sounds super quiet, really healthy. 6.2 liter. Yeah. I remember this being here last week and I didn't look at it, but also last week I didn't have a bunch of cars that were potentially totaled, so I need new inventory. I'm being proactive is what I'm doing, guys. I'm being proactive because uh, I can promise you at least a couple of my cars are totaled, and it's probably more than that. Let me throw a seatbelt on. Let's take this for a quick ride. All right, here we go. I love the surround view camera, and the flickering is my, uh, that's my camera. It's not the, uh, come on, a little bit of gas. There you go, Randy. You can do it. Good Lord. Um, I like that 360 cam and the bird's eye view. It's very nice. Very, very, very nice. What is that noise? Something is vibrating and making horrible noises. Let's hope that that stops. All right. Heads up display is in the center of the, the windshield right there. You can barely see it, but you can see it. The signals are working. 
seems to be shifting all right. So far, so good. Man, this thing, it's just big. You know, it is, it's a big vehicle. And I kind of like that about it. I mean, it's a little bit more difficult to maneuver, but it is so comfortable. It feels so solid. All right, here we go. Again, I'm going to make it a point not to not to try to smash on it from the get-go here, but just give it some throttle, roll into it, and then give it the beans. Ooh. Well, we've got it up to 58. Brakes are good. There's a nasty, nasty clunk. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can flip Big Bertha around it. I'll be, I did it. I did, I got Big Bertha spun around. Um, a nasty clunk, almost sounded like from the front end. Let me see if I can get it to do it again. Oh yeah. Okay, I wanna back up. I want you guys to, I'm gonna stop talking and I want you guys to listen and see if you can hear this massive clunk coming from, it sounds like it's coming from the driver's side front. Here we go. Wow, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty gnarly. Ooh. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't particularly like that, guys. All right. Here we go. And there's a whining noise. Where is that coming from? makes me a little bit nervous. I wonder what light this is going to be on. I mean, it shifts fine. At speed, it feels fine. Slowing down from speed, it, it feels fine. No vibrations or anything, but there, there is this... It could be... It's not in four-wheel drive, is it? No. No, this is in two-wheel drive. So it could be suspension problems on the driver's side front. That's what I'm hoping. Um... Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Uh, otherwise, it could be something a lot more serious. So, man, really, 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 really interested in this one. I'm probably not parking this exactly where it was, but I'll get it close enough. It's next to this Tahoe. Let's back it up, make sure we're in our parking spot here. There we go, not too shabby. There it is. Um, yeah, I I don't know about this one, guys. So it runs and drives fine, but there there is something clunking, clanking. Whenever you hit the throttle, and it, it is in two-wheel drive, but when you hit that throttle, you can feel it. You can feel like a clunk somewhere over here. It's like thump, thump. You can also see the brake pads are getting worn. Those things are about at the end of their life. So this thing's going to need some maintenance. And with almost 200,000 miles, you know, that's to be expected. Um, I wouldn't pay anywhere near $51,000 for this, obviously. Uh, I'll have to look up the value on this, get a better idea of what this thing is worth. Maybe I'd bid on this. I really do like it. I don't need an Escalade. Obvious, obviously, I don't need an Escalade. Nobody needs an Escalade. But it would be nice to have. Do me a favor, comment below out of the cars that we test drove today, which one, if any, would you be interested in if it was you purchasing it? The Escalade, the Charger RT, or the Chevy Silverado? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. I wanna thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch today's video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Definitely drop your comments below and tell me which car, if any of these, you would bid on. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.